yesterday was a bad day. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It was definitely one of my uh, more deflating days in this um, aviation journey to become a commercial pilot. Yesterday, I sat the uh, CPL performance exam for the first time. Quick bit of an update on, on how I'm going with it all. All the flying's done. I pretty much just have to pass performance and then I can sit the pre-license and license flight test. So I am getting close, but uh, yeah, yesterday sucked. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. I almost wasn't gonna share it <laughs> on YouTube. It was so bad, but uh, part of this channel and this journey was uh, not only to record, record the good times and the positives and things that I can hopefully help you guys um, with and help you maybe inspire you to start an aviation journey or, or help continue your aviation journey, but um, the ups and the downs as well. So this is definitely a down video, <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's, let's go find somewhere to have a quick chat about it. This day is about as miserable as my exam result. Check it out. Yeah, pretty much sums it up. Was gonna go and sit down at those tables over there, but I don't feel like sitting down. So I'm just gonna prop this camera up on some barbecues <laughs> and we'll have a chat. All right, so I've been studying for this exam for probably Two or three months on and off but it was never uh never really consistent i didn't really start studying it until maybe two weeks prior to the exam but uh which yeah probably in hindsight wasn't enough i ended up moving this exam twice so i had it booked and um, i knew i wasn't ready i didn't have the time between kids and work and um and everything to really give it the attention that it needed and the focus so uh, yeah I've moved it a couple of times I booked it sort of a month out but really didn't get stuck in um, for like I said for the last couple of weeks before the exam I did I did think I was ready but obviously wasn't tell you what I can't wait for aviation to be my sole job and and not have to juggle outside work to support a family and studying on top of that as well it's, it's definitely been one of the biggest challenges in this whole journey so when I say yesterday it was a bad day I mean it was a bad result it was the worst result I've had on an exam so far I was almost not going to share it with you guys but um, like I said earlier the, the goal of this channel is to, to share everything with you the positives the negatives and I'm sure there's other people that have been in this position as well that have failed this exam. My result for the exam, oh, <laughs> it's always hard to say, 49%. Yep, that's how bad it was. I, um, you don't even get KDRs. So if you get less than 50%, they basically on the report say, go back and study everything. And yeah, I'm gonna list a few of the reasons why I think I failed and what I can do moving forward to try and get this exam over the line. As em embarrassing as it is for me, um, yeah, I'm willing to share this result with you guys because I know there's other people out there that have got similar results. And uh, yeah, maybe you're one of them watching, watching this video. So let me know in the comments below if uh, you've failed this exam before what your mark was, um, a bit of your journey as well, and maybe other people watching this video can get some inspiration or know that they're not the only ones that have failed this exam before. And, and then, uh, yeah, if you're now past that exam, leave that in the comments as well. And uh, yeah, people, hopefully people can get some inspiration and tips from, from you on how to move forward. So the reasons I think I failed the exam, um, the biggest one was actually speed. I don't think it was a huge um, knowledge deficiency. I know that sounds funny, only being a result of 49%, but the combination of um, how quickly 
you can get the answers and how quickly you can read the question but pull all of the um, critical information out of the question as well is, is very crucial to passing this exam. I spent a lot of time, I think I got most of the marks I got right were on the harder questions. I started at the four mark, there's a PNR question, uh, four mark, went down to three marks, two, and then did the ones at the end. Uh, but I spent way too much time doing the harder questions. So that's, um, yeah, that was definitely one of the issues. Knowledge deficiency on uh, forward, on loading charts, echo loading charts, especially the um, forward limit. I just wasn't up to scratch with that um, with that side of things. And another thing I'm gonna fix is, or I'm gonna focus on, is um, doing more practice exams in a, a real exam scenario. So it's one thing I found myself referring back to and still learning a few of the, um, the questions that I was getting in practice exams. So I was going back to the book and if I didn't understand it fully, where I should have set up myself in the exact same scenario, exam scenario with all the documents, the only required documents you're allowed in, and timed it as well. So put a two and a half hour timer on and just done uh, more practice exams in an exact exam scenario. That would have given me a better idea of where I was actually um, lacking a bit of knowledge and spending too much time on those questions. Work on the speed, work on the knowledge. Um, you've got to be careful though, because you definitely have to RTFQ these questions. It's a balance between doing it quickly and also understanding the critical information that they're asking. So yeah, that's that's one thing you do have to be careful of, even though you need to do this exam fast. Uh, you just need to understand the critical information that they're asking in the question as well. Once I'm really comfortable with my results, I'll, uh, the results I'm getting in the practice exams, I'll rebook the exam for maybe another week or two out and then uh, just keep, keep studying, keep studying all the way up to the exam. Oh, and one last tip is formulas. So I've found that as you're studying and as you're uh, working the formulas out for each type of question, just write a, a a cheat sheet of formulas and then the last couple of days before the exam is to try and memorize all of the the formulas and the first thing you do once you start the exam is to write those formulas down so before you get before you even do one question um, before CASA can get into your head and start trying to confuse you is write all of the formulas down and uh, always refer back to them if you're one of those people that have failed the exam you're feeling down about it um, my tip for you is to is take that day. It's okay to feel like shit and feel like you're not going to be able to pass something. Um, but give yourself a day. Get everything out that you need to get out. Feel bad about it. Complain, whatever you need to do. But then uh, just leave it at that day. Um, lock it into that day and then just shut it off. The next very next day, move on and start planning how you can move forward, what you can do better. Um, and just get back in the, the motion of, of study and moving forward. All right, hopefully my next video is passing the CASA CPL performance exam. If you got some value from this video, smash the like button. Uh, once I've passed this CPL exam, I'll have an influx of videos on tips and tricks that hopefully help you guys pass first time. I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, so hopefully my next video is a pass video on... Um, ah, the bug just flew my eye. Ha, ha, ha.